different uh, type of the problem. So this is an example for um, the undamped operating <coughs> system. So this is about the pulley. And uh, the pulley basically is the one key word, one key step for you to correctly solve the, the mass pulley system is a way to find the relations between the displacement of the pulley to the displacement of the mass, which means between the displacement of the pulley to the degree of freedom x. That is a key step, okay? And again, this key step has been easily uh, handled in your statics. So here we quickly do these things. So for this case, we I assign the degree of freedoms to be the displacement of this mass block, and we want to formulate the equation of the motions and then also determine the natural frequencies here. Derive the equation of motion, then we start with the drawing the free body diagrams. And so for here, I like to, for um, one, two, three, I like to have a three free body diagrams be drawn in a way to help us to understand the relation between the pulley's displacement to the degree of freedom. So here, this draw the, free, the first uh, free body diagram. So let me call this is the pulley one, this is the pulley number two, and this is the M. So this is a pulley number one here. Okay, that is a center. So assuming this, uh, we pull down the mass block, basically you can imagine this pulley will be level up a little bit. Okay, so this pulley will be, um, been, um, say this pulley going to go up a little bit to here. So you can imagine this spring has been stretched. So that means from that stress spring, that's going to have the, the force existing upon the spring to, to this pulley. So let me assume the displacement of this pulley, let me call this is x1, okay? That representing the displacement of the pulley one. Okay, so using this notation, we know this force will be K1, Kx1, okay? So basically here, this showing is the displacement of the pulley one. On the other side, um, this mass going to go down, so this pulley for the two, for the number two, going to down a little bit. So let me again the, draw the pulley number two. So that is the center here. So for pulley, and again, this one, number two, going to go down a little bit. So measure from center to center, let me say using notation x2. So basically here, this one going downward by x2, certain amount. And again, you can see the spring attached to pulley two has been stretched. So this way, the spring force will be k times x2. Okay, so that is the from the first step we analyze the uh, the deformation of the spring and displacement of the pulley. Okay, right now the next step we also know that because this is the wire, and if here we assume this wire is rigid and no mass. Okay, so basically that is a rigid wire. So basically this wire is only responsible for loading transmissions, tensions, okay, and not, no other things. So from here, uh, let me draw the spring. Uh, sorry, the mass, okay? So the mass is going to have the degree of freedom, so xt, and that means velocity or accelerations, something like this one. Uh, all of them will zoom in the same direction. And right now I'm going to, uh, to label, to formulate the, the tension in the wire. So right now the mass is going down, so due to action reaction, you should imagine there's a wire tension here, let me call the T. Okay? So T is the force uh, exist, existing in the wire, okay? So right now you can see this wire is going around the pulley tube. So let me label, right now the wire is something going around here. 
if at this moment, again, let me take the free bar diagram on the wire in a way to study the influence of the wire on the pulley. Basically, you can imagine there's a tension here, T, right? You good? And in particular, let me highlight, let me highlight this portion here. This portion is a wire basically is linking to you from this point to this point, right? So basically here, this one and this one is the action reaction. So that reason why I put the magnitude T here, uh, due to this reason, because this is the rigid wire, so all the reaction actions should be the same magnitude in this portion. So that reason, I translate the magnitude from here to here, they are equal in magnitude. Be good? Okay, so we continue. So in the same way, the wire going around the bottom of this pulley. Okay, so again, let me take the three bar diagram of the wire. From there, I analyze the, the tension, and again, that's T here. Okay. So from here, we can begin to combine the all three together. The, uh, <coughs> The all the three free bar diagrams are connected to one another through T. See? Each one they have a T. So I'm going to use T as the medium to connect them to integrate everything. So from here you can see for this one, you see the two T will be equal to K times X1, right? And for this one you see two T equal to K times X2. For this case, using Newton's law, mx double dot plus t equal to zero. mx double dot equal to minus t. Right, so that means mx double dot plus t equal to zero. Okay, so that is the first step. The second step, The second step is this. Here I have been artificially introduced um, X2 and X1. And however, for our degree of freedom, for this single degree of freedom system, we're going to uh, use the capital X. Capital X is our degree of freedom we uh, defined. So the step two is I'm going to relate we define x1 and 2 in terms of the degree of freedom here. And that portion should be very straightforward. If you look at here, for this pulley moving upward by this amount, that means in terms of the wire, that's going to contribute the displacement of wire by double of x1. Right? because the wire have the, been going through from this portion to this portion. If this pulley is moving up to this position, then basically the wire surrounding him should be double of that amount. Okay, in the similar way, the same thing, if the second two, the number two pulley is moving by this amount and again surrounding by itself, there's a two side of the amount. So in this way, the total displacement in the wire contribute to the x. So from here we know the x equal to 2 times x1 plus x2. Uh -huh. I think the better way is 2x1 plus 2x2. We good? And again, this is the fundamental concept from statics. And I go back to look at your textbook. So with this information in mind, then I'm going to combine everything together. So from here, from the two equations, Basically, here I added up together 40 equal to kx1 plus kx2. Let me rearrange kx1 plus x2. Okay, so let me call this is equation, um, whatever, equation 1, equation 2, equation 3, and let me call equation 4. Okay, let me call equation 5. So from equation 4 and 5, then we can find is this, the 40, basically equal to k times x1 plus x2, 
And using equation 5 here, we can see the x1 plus x2 equal to uh, uh, x over 2. Right? So with the equation 3, so we introduce, so therefore from here, uh, so therefore, m x double dot plus t, what is t? t equal to k times x uh, divided by 8 equal to 0. So therefore, I would say t equal to kx divided by 8. Okay? Be good? So this is our equation of motions, and then, so therefore, the natural frequencies uh, will be equal to k divided by 8 divided by n, and we take a square root here. Okay? So that's a one example.